three legislative priorities going into the next session? Um, we need to tackle the issue of illegal immigration because our federal government is falling short. That's a federal responsibility. But we've got 2,000 miles of our border uh, the federal government is failing to protect. So Texas has been <coughs> spending in excess of $100 million uh, protecting our border, and we need to continue that. And there's some areas that we need to expand uh, with respect to the Ranger Recon team that was established several years ago and, and expanding their capabilities. They volunteer with um, a lot of volunteer, or they work with a lot of volunteer patrols, uh, and that's something that we could look forward to in expanding as well, as well as uh, camera surveillance and other surveillance technologies on our border. That's something that the state shouldn't have to step into, but we need to, and that needs to be a priority. In education, we need to look at more local control. I've talked to most of the members of our, um, our ISD, and uh, it, you'd be amazed of how much of the unfunded mandates that come, even from Austin. We talk about unfunded, unfunded mandates from uh, Washington, but Austin has a lot of unfunded mandates on our education uh, system. And uh, a lot of the trustees in our ISDs uh, have a desire to be able to control the calendar more, teacher pay, uh, ratios, student to teacher ratios, those types of things. So a lot more uh, control as far as that. And then uh, one innovative thing that we've done in Collin County is with respect to uh, indigent health care. All the counties are mandated by the state of Texas to provide indigent health care. And what we've done, we've done something quite unique with respect to leveraging the private sector um, health care industry in Collin County. And we've totally revamped the way we do that. And I think this is the conservative way to address Obamacare. Not only do we need to push back and stop on Medicaid expansion and stop Obamacare from coming into the state of Texas, but we have a unique, um, innovative way to tackle um, health care for the needy that we've implemented in Collin County and I want to help take that statewide. Top three priorities, be. Well, as I've already mentioned, I think infrastructure issues uh, must uh, be close to the top of the list. Uh, we've been under uh, a stage three drought restrictions uh, for most of the last three or four years. If you saw the article in the Dallas Morning News uh, just a, a week ago Sunday, Lake Lebon is at less than 50% of its level. It's lower today than it was this time last year. If we don't get some significant rain, we're going to be uh, under a watering ban come this summer. And so that impacts not only uh, the quality of life, we enjoy now, but the ability to continue to grow and develop um, as, as an area. Uh, transportation infrastructure is right up there as a, a priority. Uh, we are choking on our own congestion. We're very blessed to live in a, a dynamic growing area, but as new people move to the area, we do not have enough money currently to maintain the roads that we have, much less build new infrastructure. So smart, effective management of our resources and stopping diversions uh, out of our transportation fund will help solve those issues. Uh, the proposition coming up next November on the ballot is a billion dollars, uh, which is a good start, but just a start in order to solve the issues. The Proposition 6 that passed last November uh, is an important start in dedicating $2 billion of funds towards water infrastructure, which is you know, just desperately needed for our area. Uh, education is another area that, we t that has already been discussed. Uh, Plano has been blessed to have a very strong public education system that needs to remain so. We need to not let the courts decide how education gets funded. That must be the responsibility of the legislature. Lastly, limited accountable government. Um, our government needs to run efficiently. It needs to adopt best practices. All of our businesses have been faced in the last number of years uh, with the task of doing more with less. We need to make sure our government functions in the same way. We cannot have inefficiency uh, and hope to have the, the kind of results we need in our government. Nullify Obamacare. Uh, really stand up for states' rights. I've spoken with a lot of residents in the district and that seems to be one of their top priorities is that they don't like the fact that they're one either forced to purchase something that they don't they don't want to purchase or second that the fact that with the passage of Obamacare that their costs are increasing and they're being covered for things that they don't necessarily need and so that would definitely be the first one we definitely need to stand strong at the state and to practice our 10th amendment rights the second one would be to uh, focus on education education has become very centralized well, with its planning and that's not serving our students that's not serving our teachers who are trying to serve our students and parents aren't very happy with what's going on either um, I think the, the the way that we're trying to go about it really is to throw more money at it say oh we need to fund education because it's for the kids it's for the students but more funding isn't necessarily resulting in better education in resulting in students who come out of school with critical thinking skills with skills ready for the workforce 
And so we really need to localize the control of it, allow teachers who are actually in the classrooms with the students the ability to work with their students because they know them best, yeah. allow parents who are actually in the community sending their, their children to these institutions to, to have a say in what their children are learning and to actually be able to see you know, the results that they're hoping, they're hoping for by sending their children there. And then the last thing that I really want to address is the Second, second Amendment rights. I'm really uh, a proud supporter of the Second Amendment and I really want to want constitutional carry passed in Texas. It's, it's surprising that Texas, you know, being one of the reddest states, is actually not, you know, leading the way in this fight. And I definitely think we need to because, you know, we have a right to protect ourselves and, you know, I don't think that's something that we should, we should you know, throw away. So those are my three issues. Thank you.